and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the Ask Video Mail for the week of July 27, 2015. Welcome to the site to you new members and welcome back to the old members. The Ask Video Mail is your chance to get your question in character animation or performance answered in a video just like this one, but I need your questions if I'm going to answer them right. Yes, so please send your questions to webmaster at KennyRoy.com. I go through all the questions and I answer the ones that I think will help the most people. There's no such thing as a stupid question and it is the best way to get the most out of the site. Welcome. It is an exciting week. I am happy to report that our video game, Death Crank, was just greenlit on Steam. What that means is that we are um, now allowed to sell it on the Steam uh, video game market. And it is the best marketplace for video games on uh, PC. Holy mackerel. This is, this is amazing. This is huge news. Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, come to our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash Arconyx, A-R-C-O-N-Y-X. Just come, come and check it out. Uh, it's, a, it's a great time. We're hanging out all day, every day, and uh, we're just uh, sort of stumbling over our, ourselves uh, trying to get some game development done. But we're having a great time doing it, and I think you should come by. We're, get, we're getting some animation done, we're getting some, some artwork, some modeling programming and, and game development, and there's a great, great crowd there. Um, who's uh, you know hanging out and having fun all day? So come by the channel twitch.tv slash arconics. Congratulations to us for getting a, a game on Greenlight, uh, Greenlit, and then uh, uh, we're just going to keep on moving forward together. That's not the big news though. So if you're the finger crossing type, please still uh, be uh, hoping and wishing for us. I can't tell you what the news is, but um, if it goes through, it'll go through in the next maybe uh, four weeks. And uh, it'll mean huge things for not just me, uh, but for the industry, um, which includes you guys and everyone in general. So uh, cross your fingers. Check out the question this week. It's a goodie. Oops, I messed up the uh, that uh, question. It looks like a little bit of the uh, previous question was uh, not uh, copied and pasted over. Sorry about that. Anyway, it ended after the um, uh, the part of the question where it talks about sacrificing um, good poses to make it work in the real world. And so here's here's um, something I, I've I've answered this question in the context of just what is expected in uh, the different. Uh, industries, either TV, visual effects, film VFX, feature animation, and then the major difference between that and games. And uh, that, that's what I, I, I used to have an answer for that in a video mail just kind of that, that answered this question from that perspective. But now that I've done a little bit of game development, and now that I've done um, basically, I mean, this was years ago that I answered this question sort of the first time. Now that I've also gone through the tempo kick, um, I, have, uh, I have a slightly uh, modified answer to this question from both of those perspectives. Again, now that I've done some game development and now that I've kind of fully developed my, my tempo workflow. And um, here's, here's my new answer. There are cameras in games as well. And knowing what your action is supposed to do in game is pivotal to making it look good in game. And so I used to answer, well, it just just make it look good for whatever it's supposed to be. It, it be it a a, a video game or a uh, like a TV commercial or some feature visual effects or feature animation or whatever, um, it needs to work with that paradigm. And you can get away with a lot more cheated poses um, when it is a linear medium like film or TV and not as much as when, you, when you're doing games. But there, I, I've realized that there's also games in cam uh, cameras in games. So if it's a third-person adventure game, something like um, Assassin's Creed, then if you're doing a, a motion that's like a run, 
then it needs to look great from that from that that third person camera where you know the camera's behind the character and you might do a you might think that you're doing a perfectly physical run that is you know really accurate to the real world and can be seen from all angles but it might not be very interesting from the back when you're controlling that character and you're moving him forward and you uh, basically you're staring at the back of your your character and that's one thing that we've kind of realized is that um, um, we we spend so much time working on our characters' faces and and whatever when we're when we're modeling them and texturing them and whatever but ninety percent of the gameplay you're look staring at a character's back. And you need to make it interesting and not boring to watch the entire game basically take place over the shoulder of, of a character. And we've had to tweak some things like walk cycles and run cycles because of what it looks like from the back. And so making actually cheats cheats to that third person camera so i have to modify what i i said before from a um from a, a place of a little bit more, uh, deeper understanding of how games are made and how we are uh, actually creating you know effects and and engaging our audiences be they be they you know players with a controller or people just like sitting back in a movie theater um, there there are cheats in in games and you should know about them and not just say this is the game it needs to be I need to do real world poses and then the second thing the second part of this answer uh, is in regards to tempo and my my sort of new understanding of how of how uh, you know audiences are engaged by using tempo and and just how that goes and and what I w want to say about that is there is a a phase of the animation process that tempo really takes care of nicely and that is your 3D position is worked out beforehand. By doing that pass with your helper object, you're basically doing a 3D pencil sketch. You're doing a, a, a energy pass, just a gest, it's like almost like a gestural pencil sketch that is very, very just energetic and is, is meant to just convey the energy of the scene and nothing else. And because you're doing that, but it works in 3D space, you are creating something that is a much higher and, and more developed launch point for the rest of your animation than if you had taken just your thumbnails and tried to get your poses into the scene first instead of your timing, okay? Um, because think about it. We're always talking about how poses need to be strong and they need to, well, in the context of this question, work to camera and all that stuff. If you think about it, though, it works more to camera if you start that pose in the position where it's supposed to be. And you do that with tempo, with your helper object, or w with whatever you use. Even if you use like your character to, as your helper object and you just chess piece it around. Whatever it is, you're trying to nail down that energy and that energy is conveyed through the camera based on all of the parameters that you need to, to determine you know where that character is in space in other words it's not going to be accurate it's not going to be a good energy pass or helper pass or tempo pass um, if if that character is 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 just like on screen and you're like squinting your eyes and you're doing like a little bit of like kind of like fudging of of the energy because you, if you're going to do that, you might as well just do a pencil test. You might as well throw away the helper object, take a, a take the grease pencil tool or or some other 2D tool, and you might as well draw it. Okay, and if you can do that, then you probably didn't ever need tempo to begin with. Um, I think it's a faster way than a pencil test, especially to uh, considering that you get the the 
you get two things for one. You get that energy, which is really what a pencil test is supposed to do, is supposed to try out different timings and different sort of uh, stagings of a, of a shot. Um, you get to try those out, and at the end of it, you've got a 3D representation of, of the rough idea of, of, of your scene. So I, I think it's faster, but um, you know, to each his own or her own. So um, my, my modified answer uh, to summarize is this. There are actually cameras in games, and you do have to actually take into consideration how your animation is going to be viewed in a game the same way you would um, with, with like a linear medium. Um, that obviously doesn't go for like an adventure game, like a non-player character that's standing there and, you know, they're cutting fish and you have to walk up to them and get a quest or whatever. Obviously, that needs to be animated, you know, so that can be viewed from any angle because your character is going to walk up to them. But bearing in mind that your character is going to walk up and the camera is going to be behind them for that like, entire game does make a huge difference. So I, I'd like to modify how we, how we have been thinking about the difference there. And then also think about how much tempo is actually giving you for free, basically. It's giving you that, that timing pass, but also it is working out beforehand a lot of the issues of 3D space that you would have to uh, uh, then go back into your poses once you've nailed down your poses with tons and tons of keyframes just piling on top of those poses that you got in if you did that before timing um, uh, tempo gives you a huge leg up on that workflow by making it so that you're more than likely not going to get stuck with a pose that is not working in 3D space. All of a sudden, you know, your character's casting a shadow on the wall over there and, and it's totally giving away the fact that the arms are all like crunched up and hidden behind him because, you know, the, the, the pose had to be cheated that way to make it work in 3D space. So, um, again, another endorsement for tempo. I know you guys probably by now don't need a, uh, another endorsement for tempo, but uh, I just, you know, I, ha I have a better understanding of how things are, are made now. Um, and, and I thought I'd share that with you. So you can take that and, uh, and do what you will with it. Uh, that was a great question. That was asked a really long time ago, though. So uh, thank you to that animator also for, for being patient for that question to be um, answered. And uh, I look forward to reading some more questions. Remember, send them to webmasterkenwood.com. I, I really do. I read every single question. You still get two free days added to your subscription, every single question that you send in. So it's a good way to actually get more time on the site and to stick around and, and be working and learning and growing with all of us, okay? I'm Kenny Roy. Good luck with your animation. As always, rock on. Thank you.